Hey guys, Kirk here, back with an update, pretty big update for June 2014. Um, I actually have a working prototype um, about a month ahead of schedule, and I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of what's new, and then I'm going to go through uh, some demos in iRacing of where this applies and what's kind of interesting about it. Um, first thing I guess that's probably the most interesting is the uh, kind of a surprising thing happened while I was driving. Um, basically, the uh, I downshifted too early uh, a couple times and uh, the engine let go. Uh, not completely though, so it was kind of uh, stuttering along as uh, the engine was, you know, cylinders were dropped obviously and I could feel it. I could feel it surging forward as the engine was kind of kicking in. So. Uh, now that's not going to make you go any faster necessarily, but just the immersiveness of it um, was pretty striking, I guess. Uh, and I wasn't expecting that, it just kind of happened. And, um, that's kind of the beauty of this thing, I guess, is the uh, you really get a kind of a deeper connection with the physics engine. I think it's going to let you sense flaws in a, kind of an arcade game. If you had this enabled, you'd probably sense pretty quickly that the uh, the physics wasn't, wasn't right. Um, on the hardware front, I made a lot of progress. Uh, no longer using, I mean, other than the fact that, it, that it's working now, um, there's a lot of progress. It's now powered entirely with the uh, USB cable. So I don't have two USB plugs anymore. Um, it just turns on when you plug it in, which is kind of nice, simplifies things. Um, cleaned up the cabling quite a bit. I've got a... Uh, uh, breadboard glued to the back, so just some basic wiring here. Uh, it's a lot cleaner now. And then, what else? I'm using an external motor. So, the uh, onboard motors over here, which are good for just kind of starting out. You can validate that your software is working. Um, but you can also jack in an external motor, which is what I'm doing. This is, this is the actual prototype I'm using for uh, testing right now. Next step is to get all of these guys running and uh, that looks a little weird uh, obviously but it's a prototype and I think eventually what I'm going to do uh, is get something like this to uh, you know make it something you strap on and drive with um, but for now it's pretty raw obviously but um, it is it is working uh, what else? Working with iRacing right now, I'm looking into a set of Corsa next, and then I've got uh, a few other things lined up, including a flight simulator. Um, I think the uh, the thinking, just in terms of immersiveness, is you know think of landing a plane, um, you're gonna feel it, uh, wind gusts, whatever, banking, you're gonna be able to feel the g-forces, um, which is kind of nice. And speaking of that, I'm gonna do a demo now of. Um, actually driving in different scenarios and where this is kind of going to help you or give you more information that you didn't have before. So with that said, I will hit the edit button. Okay, this is a Daytona road course. I'm going to go up on the banking here. This is in uh, sort of up-down G mode. And right here, you can start to feel it kicking in. Because I'm banking, going around a bank turn this fast, it's squashing you down in your chair in real life, and now you can feel it kind of let up a bit. It is, uh, I'm just gonna blow through these cones here. And hit this turn fast. So 201, 200 miles an hour. Really, you're getting squashed here. Uh, these little bumps, you can feel them. Another thing I'm going to do here is slow it down and go into the infield. They put some nice bumps in this grass. Every single time the car goes like this, I can feel it. So again, they're using sort of visual cues to tell you things are bumpy. You really don't need them. Because every one of those, I'm feeling it. So those are the little kind of cues that kind of give you a nice sort of immersive sense of what's going on with the car. 
Also, when you pit into your pit stall, they have uh, these jacks that'll make sure you're not going anywhere. Boom, right there, you could feel it, and it actually, uh, you feel it when it drops you down as well, so it's, it's kind of interesting. So you get the banking, you get bumps, you get curves, you can feel them all. Uh, you get things like this where it drops you down. Um, and there you have it. That's just one axis. So just one axis up down, you're getting a ton of information um, out of the uh, simulator that, um, in this case, up down, the bumps probably not going to make you go a lot faster other than having an awareness of the track. Um, that you may not get out of force feedback wheel on a straightaway or something like that. Okay, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, you know, the reasoning behind why I built this and why I think it's uh, something people can actually need or would use. Um, if you look at some of the videos out that talk about, you know, threshold braking, uh, controlling the car on the limit, a lot of what you'll find is that the suggestions are use audio cues, turn up the volume on your tires, which I've done before, to get a sense of what's going on with the grip. So you're using your ears uh, in lieu of a seat of the pants. And also, as you saw in some of the driving demos, when, when you're on, you know, a bumpy straightaway, um, these simulators will kind of move the camera around to give you a sense of what's happening. So, you know, you might notice the dashboard going up and down, but you really, you know, you're not feeling that. And uh, um, so, you know, this provides all of that data, all that information. You don't have to use your peripheral vision or your ears to try to, you know, extract some usable information out of the simulator, uh, which really isn't very natural. I mean, Point. We, we have you know different senses for different reasons um, and that is uh, that's kind of the reasoning there the cost um, will depend on how many people want to buy so I'm pretty certain I could sell a hundred of them no problem question you know is okay well how many people are actually gonna buy them is that a thousand is that five thousand who knows uh, so to gauge that, and the reason I'm gauging that is to figure out what it's going to cost. Uh, people ask me, all right, great, but is it going to cost $2,000? No. Uh, worst case would not be, you know, more than probably a few hundred bucks. Worst case. Best case, hopefully closer to a hundred. But um, time will tell. It really depends on how many people want to buy it. So I'm probably going to look into a Kickstarter to get a sense of what what the demand is like after I get a fully working, fully functioning prototype together, I'll do that and uh, see if see if there's demand. Uh, once I've demoed a fully working, explained it a bit better, um, and then you know if I need to do a run of a thousand of them, uh, that'll probably bring the cost down significantly. Again, these motors here are ten bucks each right now in low quantity, so I've got fifty dollars worth of motor on my hands, just just bill of materials. You buy 10,000 motors and they cost under $2 each. So obviously you can see scale uh, brings down costs. So um, pricing TBD, but as a lot of you are aware, you can buy a you know, sequential shifter for 700 bucks. So, you know, um, while I, I'm absolutely dedicated to getting the cost down, I can't promise it will be, you know, $20. <laughs> uh, I'll do my best though. Um, anyway, that's the, uh, the latest for June. Next month, hopefully, um, I'll have it working with uh, multiple motors, and then at that point, I plan to ship some out to people who want to review them, sim pit, people like that, maybe uh, iRacing or the, uh, the guys working on a set of course and might want to try it out. Um, and uh, so, wish me luck, and until next time, uh, have fun.